Do you have any idea of where there is an ecocide? Maybe you have an idea of what is a civilization. Civilization is not a culture, is not an empire. So I've been asking myself, how does a civilization start, grows, comes to a summit, and then decline, and very often die? So let's be practical, and I will take three examples. And the last one is about us. So the first one is Maya civilization. It is uh, quite well known through pyramids, writings, calendar. It settled in uh, Mesoamerica at the beginning of our uh, period, Christ period. Uh, the people from the Maya are descended from great migrations uh, through Bering Strait, coming from Siberia and then to America. They own very much through the Olmec culture. But strangely enough, they don't settle on fertile lands, highlands near the Pacific coast, no. They choose the lowlands, uh, which were much more difficult. Very dense forest, few rivers, not very good soil, but their extremely beautiful success in their civilization is linked because they managed to have a command of the water, although uh, there was few water. They were able to dig some irrigation canals. Uh, they were plastering these canals in order to stock the water for the dry season to come. And then, through agriculture, they were able to make some surpluses and then some wealth in their own civilization. They've been producing um, very beautiful uh, frescoes, a very specific writing, eh? the glyphic writing. Uh, they were very good in mathematics. Uh, of course, they become master in architectural art. Eh? You can see the pyramids of Tikal, of Palenque. So it's very, very interesting civilization. But suddenly, about ninth century, uh, they left the cities and things went wrong. So because of what? Because of uh, fighting between uh, the cities, because of using too much wood and plaster for the monuments, and then coming to deforestation? Probably, we think that they committed, without knowing it, an ecocide. And then it ended the Maya uh, civilization. They were facing some drought, facing some inner, 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 inner wars, and later came the Spanish conquistador. But that was not the real first reason, the Spanish conquistador. They came a little bit later. So the first reason was an ecocide. Now let's come to my second example, which is in Asia this time. And this is uh, the Khmers. You know the Khmers. You know Angkor. Here you can see uh, the picture of Angkor Wat. So how did it start? The Khmer, who are they? They are descended from uh, several populations. Melanesian, Australonesian, Mongol as well. Some Polynesian as well. So they settled in... Uh, uh, in the Indochina Peninsula. Uh, they were very much influenced by Hindu culture. And then they started to build the Angkor Kingdom uh, because of at least three reasons. They were very well located because as the joint position of the trade routes, commercial trade routes between India to China, because of the fish stock and because of water, once again. Look at this tonless sap here. The tonless sap, you know, is an uh, affluent of Mekong River, 
but it is also a, a lake. And during monsoon period, this lake is uh, overflowing. And the Khmer were able to command these overflows. So, to stock the water, and then again to produce uh, several crops of rice, uh, to stock and store the water for the dry seasons, and then uh, they were making some su surpluses. So, they've been building a, a, a tremendous wealth. And then that is why they were able uh, to build uh, a water city, hydraulic city, which was the biggest religious complex of that time, about 13 centuries. The, the water was stored in the, in the reservoir that you can see there. We call them the Barai. And you still can see them today with satellite images. On these temples, you might know this so beautiful Buddhas, smiling Buddhas, very big. And also these Apsara dancers, which are so delicate, so beautiful on the frescoes. But it stopped. It stopped at the 13, 14 centuries. Why? Is it because of a revolt of uh, the people working for Korea's, for the, the kingdom of Angkor? It might be a reason. Uh, they've been attacked uh, from the west by the champs, from the north by the Thai. They've been even attacked by the Mongols. But the main reason is they've been using too much plaster and too much wood for the monuments. And they've been producing as well, after four centuries, an ecocide that's been leading to the end of their civilization. I, would, I should say the end of the empire because the civilization is still in the mind. This is today's Cambodian flag. And of course, the symbol is Angkor uh, a Kingdom. Let's come to my last example, which is, what should I say? European civilization, Euro-American civilization, Western civilization, it's up to you, you choose. How did it start? There are many, many more reasons for this civilization. But so I've been choosing some of the main reasons. It's just a choice, a hierarchy, of course. It, it started, I think, in th from three traditions and three cities. Athens, for the very beginning of democracy. Roma, for the beginning of private law. Jerusalem, for the beginning of religion, let's say our religion, Christian religion. And you can see the beginning of the spreading of Christian religion which is very important because 20 centuries later, the Christian influence is still very strong, whether you're a believer or you're not a believer. The other idea I had in mind is, of course, la Renaissance, Renaissance, uh, which is producing of so beautiful uh, artistic product, so beautiful intellectual uh, people, um, Leonardo Vinci, uh, Galileo, Michelangelo. If we look in their history, I have in mind uh, the age of discovery, when uh, the Portuguese started to go out to produce uh, the caravels in order to try to control the commercial routes. Uh, and this is the very beginning of Europe going out of Europe going out of Europe and exporting ideas, technology, and Christianity as well, very often through guns. But it's also the beginning of the dividing of the world at the benefit of the monarchies. Uh, first, the Spanish and the Portuguese, and then after, from the 17th centuries, 
the Dutch, the French, the British. And this time is quite important to me because this is the beginning of a very strange feeling to me. We started to be convinced that we are superior to other civilizations, which of course we are not. That comes to con colonization of the world. I will not stop at that time because it stays in our memory, of course. But this is the beginning in some way of an end. Of course, we still have time to uh, invent the steam engine with the Industrial Revolution. But it's, uh, to me, in history, a beginning of, uh, of an end because it we go to the, the First World War. This very slow construction I've been contracting in four minutes uh, is, of course, being uh, very much, how, how could I say, almost destroy or hesitating as a philosophy through the First World War. I like very much this uh, image because you can see civilization calls because Europe wants to civilize the world. And then we come to the First World War that paved the way to Stalin, Franco, fascism, and of course the Nazi. And with the Second World War, I had the feeling that Europe almost committed suicide. But strangely enough, very quick after the war, from 45 to, let's say, 55, there's a new funding, uh, which is the common market. This civilization, after these two huge world wars, have been able uh, to build a new, let's say, political system, geopolitical system, which is the common market that comes to the European Union with uh, 27 members, as we are now. And it's uh, also uh, a quite important period because with the end of Soviet Union in 91, uh, this is the, the time where we have only one standard economical, how could I say, pattern, uh, which is, let's say, liberal system, capitalism, and that comes to a tremendous success of our civilization, which is globalization. Banking system, OECD, WTO, G8, becoming G20. This is an economical system that spreads to the world, to China, as you know, Russia, emerging countries, the, the Libric. So this is one economical system. So it is a success of globalization of that civilization. But to me, it's bringing me at least two, two questions. There are two symptoms. The first one, it's the financial crisis that leads to a systemic crisis and a very strong critic of uh, capitalism. The second symptom is our, how could I say, ecological crisis, which is very much uh, inside the idea that we still want whatever happens unlimited growth on the limited planet. So my last slide is connected with that idea, is this one. Uh, because of uh, this ecological crisis, we have, as you know, much too much uh, carbon emissions because of uh, fossil energy. Mm -hmm. And these carbon emission is bringing climate change. And this climate change in some areas of the world, and the main one is Arctic part of our world, is much, much quicker than the, the climate, expect, uh, climate experts were expecting. Look at this satellite image on the Greenland ice cap. 
2007. So this is the d direct result of what's doing. So in conclusion, my question is linked with what I've been saying for, for, for nine minutes before that. Are we not, have we not too much exploited our fauna, our flora, our rivers, our seas, our the oceans, even the air that we breathe? Are we not committing ourselves now an ecocide? So, I think we have choices to do, choices to make. Because you see, my friends, I have four children. And the last one was born summer 2012. That is one of the reasons I really hope that this civilization, and quickly, has to adapt and change. Thank you.